Good day everybody. Today I'm going to be looking at quadratic inequalities. Specifically, I'm going to be looking at the graphical representation of quadratic inequalities. Um, before we begin, I'd like to just point out a few things. The first thing is, um, is that quadratic inequalities is nearly the same as solving for quadratic equations, except that instead of an equal to sign, we now have an inequality sign. I would also like to point out that we must know where y is positive and where it is negative in order for us to solve inequalities. y is positive above the x-axis and y is negative below the x-axis. The next thing I'd like to look at is interval notation. We have a closed dot or a closed circle. This means that the number is included and when the number is included, it is represented by a less than an equal to or greater than an equal to. It's also represented by square brackets. When we have an open circle, it means the number is excluded. It's also represented by round brackets. Now let's look at example one. x squared minus x minus 12 is greater than zero. Greater than means that there are numbers that are going to be excluded and on the number line we'll have an open circle. So what we do is we factorize that and we have x plus 3x minus 4 is greater than 0 and we find our critical values. In other words, we solve for x. So x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to 4. Now those aren't our actual values. Those are critical values. In other words, these are the numbers that we are going to plot on our number line. So we plot our negative 3 and negative 4 on our number line. These get open circles, which is what you'll see here. Why? Because it was discussed in the previous page with interval notation. We were saying that when we have this sign, the greater than sign or the less than sign, numbers are excluded. So what I've done now is I've gone ahead and turned that number line into a Cartesian plane. So there's my x-axis, there's my y-axis. And what did we say? We said whatever the expression was had to be greater than zero. So the question I ask myself is where is y greater than zero? In other words, where is y positive? So y is positive to the left of negative 3 and y is positive to the right of 4. How do I see that? I'm looking at the values of this graph, the parabola, which are above the x-axis. Look at this. This is below the x-axis. In other words, y is negative here. We want to know where is y positive. And y is positive for all values of x greater than 4 because it's above the line and less than negative 3 also because it's above the x-axis. So we say x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 4. Let's take that same expression and turn the sign around. Let's make it less than or equal to 0 now. So we factorize, we have our same critical values of negative 3 and 4, which is what you see in this graph here. So we plotted negative 3 and 4, but because of the equal to, we have those closed dots, right? So we color in those dots. And um, those are our critical values. Now, they say, where is it less than? Less than is means where is y less than 0? Where is y? negative and y is negative between negative 3 and 4. So for all values between negative 3 and 4, this expression will be negative. You can test it if you want to, substitute any value between negative 3 and 4 and you'll see that this expression will be less than 0 but if you include negative 3 and 4, you'll see that it will be less than and equal to 0. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to then say that for all the values between negative 3 and 4, this expression will be less than 0. And how do we write that? We say x is greater than or equal to negative 3, but less than or equal to 4. 
Let's look at one more example. We have x squared minus x minus 6 is greater than 0. Greater than 0, again, meaning that y must be positive. So what we're going to do is factorize it to find our critical values, and we find that x is equal to 3 or x is equal to negative 2. We plot those values, and what we are going to say now is that if x is equal to 3 or x is equal to negative 2, we need to find out where is y positive. y is positive above the line, so above the x-axis. This means that for all values of x greater than 3 and all values of x less than negative 2, y will be greater than 0. Why? Again, because it's above the line. And for all values of x to the left or less than negative 2 and all values of x greater than 3, our expression will be greater than 0. Don't forget that y is positive above this line. So for all values of x less than negative 2 and for all values of y greater than 3, this expression or this inequality will be greater than 0. It will be less than 0 between negative 2 and 3. So how do we answer our question? We are going to say that x is less than negative 2 and x is greater than 3. Thank you so much for joining us. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. We hope to see you again soon.